So I would like to start by asking you two non-traditional questions. First of all, how many of you ever visited inside of a wave energy power station? Raise your hand. Nobody. Ah, yeah, there's one. Good for you. <laughs> it's very rare. Okay, how many of you ever participated in a game of Texas Hold'em Poker? Wow, almost everybody. Everybody are gamblers in Germany, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so one night I was bored, so I was playing with my phone, I couldn't sleep, and I played in the application of uh, Zynga Texas Hold'em Poker. I got curious, what is the worst starting hand in Texas Hold'em Poker? I found out it's a two and a seven. These two and a seven were a repeating motif throughout my life. But let's start from the beginning. I was born on the 11th of April, 1986 in a small town in Ukraine called Cherkasy, which is not so conveniently located, only 200 miles away from Chernobyl. Two weeks after I was born, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded, causing the worst in history nuclear disaster in terms of cost and casualties. I was one of the babies that suffered out of the explosion. One day, my mom approached my crib, she looked down at me, and she saw her baby pale and blue and not breathing. I was clinically dead. Luckily, my mom, that was a nurse, gave me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and saved my life. That moment was the beginning of my passion towards renewable energy. And that was also one of the key reasons for establishing, later in life, eco-wave power. But the beginning of eco-wave power was also a two and a seven. When David Lab, my partner, and I opened EcoWave Power, the wave energy industry had a very, very bad reputation. <coughs> Engineering companies, banks, investors invested billions of dollars into very little wave energy power stations, and they would break after two or three days of operation. No insurance company agreed to insure such power stations, and everybody decided to stay away from this field. On top of everything, I was 24 years old, which is way younger than my peers in the energy field. I didn't have any technical background, and I was a woman in a mostly male-dominated industry. Most of the times when I came for a meeting, I went into the conference room with confidence about to present my wave energy project, and everybody went, espresso please, water. They were sure that I'm somebody's secretary. Even the statistics were not on my side. A few weeks ago, the Marker magazine, which is one of the bigger uh, Israeli financial magazines, published an article with the title, Why Female Startup Founders Cannot Raise Funds. Apparently, in Israel, which is the startup nation, only 10% of the startups that have been established between 2014 and 2017 were established by female entrepreneurs. On top of that, they said that only 20 women all over Israel were able to raise a first fundraising round, and zero were able to reach a second fundraising round. So I was 24, Wave Energy had bad reputation, and God forbid the worst thing, I was a woman and we can't raise funds, so that wasn't a very good start. Many people with this type of start in hand would decide to fold, but I decided to keep playing not because I relied on luck, but because I knew some things about wave energy that were very important. First of all, two-thirds of the world population are currently living on the coastline. With this type of population distribution, the need for wave energy is inevitable. Other than that, in many countries, wave energy can be produced around the clock as opposed to solar energy, for example, where the sun goes down at night, where you have cloud coverage or pollution that blocks the sun, the waves do not stop working. Also, the density of water is 1,000 times greater than the density of air, which means you can produce much larger electricity amounts with much smaller devices. The technology that we developed was relatively simple. We use unique floater shapes that go up and down with the movement of the waves, they're pushing a hydro cylinder that is marked number two, which is sending pressure into land-located accumulators. This pressure is used to turn a hydro motor, turn a generator, and send clean electricity into the grid. 
What was good about the technology is that first time wave energy can be seen as cost efficient. Our technology costs only $1 million per one megawatt. It is reliable. We have a storm protection mechanism, as we can see in the picture in the middle. Upon an upcoming storm, the floaters rise above the water level and lock in the upward position until the storm passes. The system is fully insurable. It's actually the first wave energy power station in the world that is fully insurable. And it is 100% environmentally friendly because we don't connect to the ocean floor. We only connect to man-made existing structures. So we went for a long journey. We started our uh, development with a small uh, power station in a wave pool in the Hydromechanical Institute in Kiev. Then we enlarged it to a 10 kilowatt system, which is operating for three years in the port of Jaffa in Israel. And last year, we finally opened our first commercial scale power station in Gibraltar. This power station will be expanded to five megawatts and provide 15% of all Gibraltar's electricity needs. The next power station that we're planning, which will be actually the biggest one that has been built in the world so far, is a four megawatt power station in the port of Manz Manzanillo in the Pacific side of Mexico. This will be a great achievement for us. The company currently holds 130 megawatts in its project pipeline with projects in Mexico, Chile, China, India, and others. But let's go back to poker. So I think with all the information that I gave you so far about wave energy, you will agree with me that we have at least two pairs, which is not a bad hand. It's not an amazing hand, but it's not a bad hand. So everything depends on the last card. But what's the difference between wave energy and poker? In poker, the last card is solely dependent on luck. With wave energy, the last card of the environment is only dependent on us. If we care about the environment, if we take action for the environment, we can have a lucky seven and can win the game with a full house. So why am I here today? I'm here today because of three main reasons. The first one, I would like to defy the statistics about wave energy. I want to show you that wave energy is possible, that wave energy is a very important resource, and it can definitely be successful because wave energy can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now. The second reason that I'm here today is to defy statistics about female entrepreneurs. Echo wave. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> You're a very good crowd, I have to say. <laughs> So I would like to say that EcoWave Power, my company, actually raised, raised its first fundraising round two years ago, and we finalized our second fundraising round in April this year. Our company plans to go public in mid-2018, which will be a huge step for us. I would like to stand here and ask you to let future female entrepreneurs to start with card to start with cards that are much better than a two and a seven, because definitely females can be a big part of the business community, and we know how to raise funds, and we know how to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> but my main message that I would like to convey today is even if you start the game with cards like two and a seven, it does not mean that this is the end of the game for you. Passion and commitment can bring you to very good results because it is always seems impossible until it's done in the words of Nelson Mandela. Thank you.